Swati ka and welcome to today's edition of Morning Focus. I am Don Sini Gritia Pimon Pan. And I'm Arklet Bunyai. Now in today's stories, now it could be seen as something more than just a little hiccup, but the army yesterday announced its stance against Indonesian observers being, uh, being deployed in the disputed area around Pratvihan Temple. And the army top brass also rejected the widespread rumors that the military is uh, planning a coup to replace the government. Right, and the Thai Party big boss, that's Thaksin Chinawat, has hinted that he does not support party list MP Khun Ming Kwan Sang Suwan as the party's prime ministerial candidate. And all that coming right up after the break. Welcome back to Morning Focus on this. It's uh, Jakri Memorial Day, yes. right? So let's uh, look at our headlines on this day. We first start with Kom Shat Luk. Flood victims rejoice over the visit of the princess. Her Royal Highness Princess Chula Pon visited Suratani and Nakhonsi Tamarad yesterday. She passed on the thoughts and care of their majesties, the, the king and queen, to the residents in the south. And meanwhile, in Grabi province yesterday, runoffs from mountains prompted residents to flee their homes and authorities warn residents in four provinces to be alert for more landslides. Meanwhile, in Suratani, authorities continue to hunt for 100 hungry crocodiles which were loosed from the zoo since the flooding last week. Right. Wow. More crocodiles on the loose, always hungry. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, in Matichon newspaper, now they're going with the story here, is 83 million baht missing from donations to flood victims. Now, what originally happened was that authorities had revealed that a total of 110 million baht had earlier been reported to come in from donations that had been set up by different <coughs> media channels and were supposed to be given out to flood victims. However, the total money that has been received by flood relief centers was only around 27 million baht. The authorities have now contacted those who had earlier said that they would be happy to donate the money and give, it, uh, give out the rest of the 83 million baht. However, they've been told by those donors that they have now changed their minds and don't want to donate the money anymore. Oh, that's not very good news, that's not, is, is it? it? It's pretty sad. Correct. I'm sitting there waiting for this money to come in and then... They don't want to give it away anymore. Right. And in daily news, 48 provinces in danger and authorities warn of rainstorms and million lives are at risk. Now, the central plains, the north and the northeast were told to brace themselves as the, a ridge of high pressure is expected to move across the regions. Now, as for the south, the restoration has begun as water has receded in several areas. So that is definitely good news. That is. Right, and those were the headlines. Now mm -hmm. we have some not so good news and yet another hiccup in the saga of Pratvihan. Now the military top brass yesterday announced that they will not allow military observers from Indonesia to enter the disputed border area surrounding the Pratvihan temple. And this announcement was made by the Supreme Commander Kun Songkiti Jakabat who headed the meeting between the Army, the Navy and also the Air Force and that was held at the Royal Thai Air Force headquarters yesterday. And he said that the presence of a foreign military force in Thailand would be in violation of the country's territorial sovereignty and stressed that the armed forces are duty bound to protect the country and that they will not allow any foreign military force to enter Thailand as it could affect the country's national defense plans. Furthermore, the agreement that the foreign ministry had reached with Cambodia and Indonesia to send these observers to the disputed border area had nothing to do with the military. This, year, the, this brings yet more light on the internal conflicts within Thailand's power holders as a military source has since said that Defense Minister Prawit Wong Sawan had, uh, and the military were unhappy that the Foreign Minister Kun Kasek Pirom had agreed with Indonesia's proposal to sit in as a, media a mediator on bilateral meetings and send its observers to the disputed border area without consulting the armed forces beforehand. Now, the Supreme Commander also said that uh, documents related to the United Nations Security Council or the UNSC meeting on <clears throat> February 14th this year um, held in New York that the UNSC calls on the two sides to avoid any actions that could lead to clashes and conflict. Now, he insisted that the two sides mention is only Thailand and Cambodia. He also cited a document of an 
ASEAN foreign ministerial meeting held on February 22nd this year, which calls on Cambodia and Thailand to resume bilateral negotiations and Indonesia to support the two countries. Now, General Songkiti also said that Thai and Cambodian governments signed a memorandum of understanding in 1995, which uh, provides the Thai-Cambodian General Border Committee, GBC, to be set up with the defense ministers of the two countries as co-chairs. He said that the Thai military has adhered to the bilateral commitments between the two countries and it is willing to attend the next GBC meeting in Cambodia at a proper venue and at the right appropriate time. Right now, um, that might have been some of the bad news, but there's mm -hmm. the, the army have thrown in some good news with this right. story because, you know, they always like to keep us mm -hmm. uh, happy when it comes to coups. Hi. Now, at the same, at, this was at the same press conference. Now, the Supreme Commander rejected all these widespread rumors that there is an imminent coup waiting to happen. Now, General Songkhdi said that the announcement is the consensus of the army chiefs from the Navy, the Air Force, and also the, the military and also the police force and he assured that soldiers and also the police would not get involved in any political activities so the people should not believe in any coup rumors. Now, he threatened that if any military commander who leads his soldiers in a coup they would be regarded as a rebel and dealt with accordingly. Now let's back up for a bit. Waves of coup rumors have surfaced and persisted over the past six months. Now the yellow shirts, the opposition, and recently the election commissioner, Sotsi Satyatam, claimed that the military would stage a silent coup to clear the way for a national government to be formed. However, the strongest rumor of a military coup was sparked by a recent meeting of movers and shakers in Thai politics who gathered at a house of an important person in Sukhumvit area. Now, it is a meeting place where decisions on the government changes in the past were made. It was proposed at the meeting that an interim national government should be formed to restore national order. Right now, it's been said that this national government's top priorities would be to grant amnesty for those convicted of offenses related to color-coded politics and also to amend the constitution to ensure that there's more justice within society. Now, it was also agreed that the national government should be allowed to run the country for the next two to three years. That's before a general election is called. However, a source at the meeting had said that these meetings had failed to specify exactly how a national government would be formed and uh, if it was not through a military takeover. Now, this, is this is what has contributed to the constant widespread rumors of a military coup in the past several months. So they just want an explanation of how we're going to make a, a new national government if mm -hmm. the army doesn't intervene. Right, and let's move on to other matters. Kun Argla dreams are certainly uh, crushed when a former Prime Minister and Pua Thai Party de facto leader Thaksin Shinawad has hinted that he does not support party list MP Ming Kwan Sang Suwan as the Pua Thai Party's Prime Ministerial candidate during his phone in at the party yesterday. Kun Ming Kwan okay, has emerged as a potential Prime Ministerial candidate for Pua Thai. Uh, following his leading role at the censure debate last month. Now, he proposed himself for the position and gained support from certain members of the Pua Thai MPs. However, uh, Kun Taksin told the party members yesterday that they should not overly support uh, certain figures as such a move could jeopardize the party. Right. Now, he didn't actually mention any names in this, but he was quite harsh in, in his criticism. He said, that today somebody in the party thinks too much about himself and plans to be the leader, but it is not the time to propose as, uh, anyone as Prime Minister because the House has yet to be dissolved. Now, he also insisted that party members should not support anyone just because of money, because obviously in Thailand nobody would do that. It's not mm -hmm. a good thing. And this is a quote from him. He said, haven't I got money? Is that a rhetorical question? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure of the, the intonation on that. It should have been like, haven't I got money? Or is right. it like, haven't I got money? You know? Right. Like in, uh, in an upset way. Yeah. <laughs> right? And Kun Taksin said that he gave his advice to the party's policy platform, which is to be announced on April 24th. Now, he said he is confident that his party will win the next uh, general election as its policy were so good that eligible voters would throw excessive support to the party and then he will find his way back to his homeland. 
again. Now, Pua Thai Party yesterday announced that they were confident that they would win about 270 seats in the parliament in the next general election. Right, and do you know who else is also confident of the next general election? Uh, the, op the Democrat Party. That's right? correct, uh, as, as well they should be. They said they're ready for the next general election. Thep Thai Sen Pong, the spokesman for Democrat leader uh, Abhisit Wei Chashiwa, said that the Democrat Party will promote its current leader as the next Prime Minister and also the 172 existing Democrat MPs will stay with the party for the next <laughs> election. Uh, besides that, there are new candidates that are also 90% ready and the lineup of both constituencies and list candidates we will be completed after the Song Grand Festival. He also announced that the party has raised enough funds for all their election campaign and that the Democrats said its candidates will also distribute leaflets containing their policies and their achievements to the people during the Song Grand Festival in their respective constituencies. So something to look forward to as both parties go head to head yes. in the upcoming general elections. All right, and with that we move on to commentaries regarding uh, the flooding situation. Now, Tairat's Malukjan today blamed the government for its poor handling of the flood problems in the southern provinces. Now, the writers said it appeared that the government did not learn any lessons from last year's massive flooding which hit several provinces across the country. Now the government's response to the devastating flood was slow, unsystematic and inefficient and the root cause of the poor performance stemmed from the fact that Prime Minister Apisid Wechashiwa did not take charge of handling the problem but instead delegated the task to his subordinates. Right now, Meluk Jan also has a solution for this. He said that the government would have to set aside an emergency fund of around uh, 44 billion baht to distribute to as affected residents, as well as to help farmers whose crops have been destroyed by the floods. Now, uh, adding to the budget to cover the damages from last year's massive floods, the total expenditure bills would amount to a staggering 100 billion baht. Now, Meluk Jan also said that he had sympathy for the government in this matter and prayed that it would be able to secure enough funding to ease the hardships of the flood victims. However, he did doubt that the current government would be able to keep its promise that they would be handing out 5,000 baht in emergency money that would be remitted to the flood victims at uh, any time soon, as several of the victims from last year's flooding have yet to be compensated with that uh, same amount, in fact. Correct. So, fingers crossed right there. As I remember last year that, uh, according to an anti-graph probe into this situation, less than 10% of the assistant went out to right. uh, the flood victims. Uh, that's not a lot, is it? It's not really enough, is it? <laughs> right. And in its editorial, Tyrod said that the cause of the worst flood in several decades is both man-made and caused by nature. Now, caused by freak weather, heavy rainstorms, which pounded the region for several days uh, running, causing mudslides and water runoffs, were, of course, uh, made by nature. But human beings are equally blamed for the forest encroachment and illegal logging uh, to claim land for rubber and oil palm plantations or resorts or mining. Now, there were about 60 incidents of the mudslides in the northern and southern region as the result of the forest encroachment, which has wiped out trees which should have... Uh, been used to prevent the mudslides. Now, the editorial also blamed corrupt officials, corrupt politicians, and greedy businessmen for being responsible for the widespread forest encroachment. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's that. Now, today we don't have a cartoon, do we? No, but today is Chakri Day, and yes. you have the details on that, Kun Arglis. Yes, it's, it's, it's to celebrate the founding of the Chakri dynasty. Yes, in uh, 1782 by King Rama I, <laughs> and today is a holiday. Yeah, did you just read that on Wikipedia? Um, no, it was uh, stored in my memory. Ah, okay, yes. that's good, that's good. And that wraps up uh, today's edition of our show. Um, more comments, suggestions. You can email us at, at postnews. Morning, focus <laughs> morning focus at postnews.co.th. And with that, we